uh, Garrett Riley got asked quite a few questions uh, about the Clemson offense and kind of his philosophy. But one of the things that I wanted to talk to talk about first was one of the reporters asked Garrett Riley, why Clemson? Why did you choose Clemson? I'm sure they weren't the only person interested. Uh, you know, you only spent one season at TCU. Why Clemson? Um, and he made a response basically alluding to the fact that Clemson just checked all the boxes. Uh, you know, it was one of those places that checked all the boxes that could pull him away from TCU. You know, he said he was happy at TCU. It had only been there a season. His wife's family's from Texas. His family's from Texas. Uh, he's got a lot of ties there. So, uh, but he said it was, you know, it was kind of, I guess, a, you know, too good to pass up type of situation. So when you hear that about your program, it's it's kind of a, you know, it's a good thing to hear another coach from the outside kind of say that because he did say Clemson wasn't a program that he he followed super closely. He didn't have any real ties to Dabo. So it was kind of out of the blue that we kind of pulled him to Clemson. So that's kind of that's kind of a cool thing um, for Clemson, I think. Uh, so absolutely. Uh, to be able to pull, uh, you know, the the top assistant in the nation. Um, I know Dabo said he talked to Lincoln Riley prior to, uh, I guess, the national championship, uh, but didn't speak with um, Garrett until the day after the national championship was over. So uh, they asked them prying questions. That, though? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I do. Uh May, okay, I could believe that Dabo didn't sweet, speak personally with Garrett Riley before the national championship game was over, but he did admit to talking to his brother Lincoln uh, before. So, and yeah. you know, to he said that he said Lincoln's one of the guys that in the profession that he trusts and one of the guys that he can go to and speak in confidence. So I'm sure when he called Lincoln. You know, and he said when he called him, he wasn't even sure that he was going to make the change. So maybe I'm assuming he called Lincoln to gauge interest for Garrett uh, and kind of what he thought of it. And then probably, you know, based his decision, he said he had, you know, two or three people on his list that he was going to vet. He never named them the other two people. So I don't think we'll ever know who those other two people, if they existed or uh, who they are. Uh, but, um, yeah, it, it was interesting to see the, the reporters kind of press Dabo on the process and, and how he made the decision. But he did say that the Orange Bowl was a big factor in him determining that a change needed to be made on, on, the, uh, on the offensive side of the ball. So, um, And I think we, we made the, the best offensive hire offensive coordinator hire that we could have. Uh, Garrett Riley described his offense as fast and violent. Uh, described it as a run first concept. Uh, he, you know, he kind of talked about his time at Appalachian State and how those guys are so good at running schemes and running the ball. And he picked up a lot from that. And that's kind of integrated into his offense. Um, and it really is a run first spread style offense. So I'm really interested to see the stuff that this guy is going to be able to do with the likes of Will Shipley, Phil Maffa, uh, our big tight ends, uh, you know, Jake Brenningstool. Um, you know, it it's going to be – I think it's going to be a breath of fresh air for Clemson. And I, I can't wait to see what, what he does with this offense. But I, I like some of the stuff that he said. You know, I like his philosophy um, as he described it. And, you know, I I think he's going to be a good fit for Clemson. He seems to be connecting with recruits already. So that's always a good thing. Uh, it probably helps that he's, he's that certainly he's, he's certainly connecting with recruits already. Well, yeah, there, there might be there might be some good news tomorrow. That's all. I'm yeah, saying. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, little tease, little tease uh, yeah. for the Clemson fans out there. But um yeah, I mean, it, it probably helps that he's he's super young, right? Uh, you know, and and honestly, how 
how Dabo runs his program, what a, what a place to be for a young guy with a wife and two young kids. You know, Dabo really builds that, that family atmosphere at Clemson. You know, families come to the facility. They have like family dinner night, like once a week or something like that, I think. Um, and, you know, I think it's, you know, it's a nice small, small area, small town type feel. So, although I don't think that will help us keep him any longer than he's going to want to stay, which is probably not too long. Uh, but we'll enjoy the ride while he is here. Um, and hopefully return to national contention next season uh, with a college football playoff appearance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, and, and hearing those words, um, it, you know, you already mentioned it, you know, the, hearing that the offense was going to be violent and fast. I don't think I've ever heard a Clemson offensive coordinator talk like that. No, um, mm-hmm. definitely not. So it, yeah, that, that was, that was music to my ears. I think someone in the, in the, uh, and also talk about the ad- adapting to players, um, which was all which yes. was, was huge. Yes. Um, Cause that's something that has been a gripe about, you know, about, the offense for a while now is, you know, the, the offense not really seeming to fit the skill sets of the, of the guys and uh, on the team and, and the personnel. So um, that's something that uh, has been characteristic of, of uh, Garrett Riley's offenses and e- even his brothers um, and, and being able to have that adap- uh, adaptive ability. So um, that's going to be huge. And having a power running game, I mean, it's, it's a technically an air raid, but it's, it's a, but, you yeah. know, it's built around the run, and uh, you're, it's it's very uh, malleable, and you're able to you know kind of uh, change it around to fit your uh, what, what you have in your room. So I, I think that's uh, that's a really yeah. exciting prospect. So uh, yeah, and don't, I think this was the perfect hire at the right time for for Clemson. Really excited to see uh, you know what you know the stuff that comes out in spring, spring game, and. Uh, as we get closer and closer to the uh, the season, so yeah, you you can't help but be excited as a Clemson fan. Garrett Riley saying all the right things. I think he had an amazing uh, first press conference. You know, the the violent and fast will stick in Clemson uh, fans' minds for all of the off season. I'm sure Will Shipley about jumped out of his seat when he heard violent because uh, he is probably the mo- one of the one of the most violent running backs there are uh, just, that's just, you know, kind of his mentality. So I'm sure he's, he's all about that. Um, and he, hearing him say he's not married to any certain plays. He's not, you know, I'm not so prideful of a coach to we're going to run this play because I like running this play and really fitting, really looking at, your personnel and building your scheme based off of what they do well. Something Brent Venables did very well while he was at Clemson. It's really nice to hear a coordinator say that. I saw somebody mention the, uh, we took what the defense gave us, uh, Tony Elliott and Brandon Streeter. Yeah, I look forward to not hearing that anymore. Um, Clemson has the talent to dictate to defenses what they want to do. Um, And it's sounding like with Garrett Riley, we will turn that page and we we will see a lot more of Clemson dictating the tempo, dictating the pace of the game and dictating what exactly we want to do on offense, which will be a nice change of pace. Um, I can't wait. You can't help but be excited as a Clemson fan. Um, you know, I know everybody, you know, typically not, you know, not always. Some fans disagree with some hires, some coaching hires. Uh, this is not one of them. You know, I know a lot of fan bases when they hire, you know, coaches, they're always all in and they're always, you know, super excited. But, you know, I truly do think this is an amazing fit uh, for Clemson. I think it's going to be, you know, one of those seamless fits. And he's got plenty to work with, that's for sure. And I think I think he's a great offensive mind. So there should not be a lack of production. As one of the reporters mentioned to him you know, how he feels about the expectation that's already being put on him, you know, about Clemson being a national contender again and, you know, some of the fans talking and he's like, look, there's always pressure. He's like, nobody, nobody's going to have higher expectate, have higher 
expectations than I have for myself. So, you know, again, saying all the right things. Uh, we'll we'll see in spring, uh, but I expect good things. I think Cade's a, a perfect quarterback for him as well. So, yeah, I'm sure Cade Cade's excited to get to work. Um, oh, he is. <laughs> Very much is.